the How and Why Wonder Book of Horses by Margaret Cable Self. The beginning of horses. Many millions of years ago, a tiny creature, no larger than a fox, ran across the plains of North America. It had four soft toes on its feet and is known as Eohippus. The skeletal remains of Eohippus have many things in common with the skeletal structure of the modern horse, especially in the type and distribution of their teeth. This is how we know that Eohippus is the direct ancestor of today's horses, even though the two don't look much alike. Why did Eohippus change? To answer this question, we must think a little about what problems of Eohippus were and how the creature reacted to them. The animal was small, and no doubt its flesh was tasty. The larger meat-eating animals must have considered it a very delicious morsel, but little Eohippus had no weapons of defense against its many enemies. It did not have the tearing fangs and claws of the cat family, which included the tigers, lions, and leopards. It had no hard shell like the turtle, nor thorny spines like the porcupine and hedgehog. Its feet were soft, as it did not have the hard hooves of today's horses. The only thing it could do in the face of danger was to run away. So run it did, century after century. Now, it is far easier to run on tiptoe than it is to run flat-footed. Since Eohippus ran on tiptoe, it was a better runner than flat-footed animals, and was successful for the most part in escaping enemies. (coughs) Its outside toes were hardly used at all, and as the centuries passed, these toes became smaller and smaller, while the middle toes continued to develop. Mutations or changes take place constantly in all species, and any change that improved the development of the center toes would give Eohippus an advantage. Millions of years later, Eohippus had changed so completely that it got a new name, Pliohippus. This is the first of the prehistoric horses that began to bear any resemblance to the horses of today. It was still very small, but the center toe of each foot was now very long and was beginning to develop a thick, horny nail, while the side toes had all but disappeared. Since running away was still its only mean of defense, Pliohippus, like its ancestors, was always on the alert. If the animal suspected danger, it ran. Why is the horse useful to man? It is this characteristic which makes the horse useful to man. One cannot use a steer or a cow for sport or for swift transportation. A steer has horns and its reaction in the face of danger is not to run but to stand still and fight. It is therefore not as timid or sensitive as the horse and not so easily trained, nor has it ever developed the horse's speed and natural agility. It is true that oxen are used as farm animals, and so are camels and other animals, but they could never replace the horse, which which can be used for heavy labor too. But more important, the horse has been man's friend and servant in war, and his companion and playmate in sport for many centuries. Did all horses look alike in early times? Animals develop according to their environment and inherited Animals develop according to their environment and inherited makeup. If there is plenty to eat, they increase in size up to a point. If they do a great deal of running, their leg muscles become very strong. Their color varies depending on where they live, for nature usually provides a natural disguise, especially for those animals which have few other defensive weapons. Forty million years ago, there were parts of the earth that were so 40 million years ago, there were parts of the earth that were very cold, barren wastes with little food for animals. Other parts were swampy with rich vegetation. Still, others had grassy plains. Sometimes, the climate of a specific region changed due to the tremendous shifting of glaciers and all forms of natural. In this case, the primitive horse migrated or even died out completely. Which types of horse sprang from Equus? The first horse that really resembled those of today was named Equus. It lived first in North America, but when shifting glaciers and ice changed the weather, Equus migrated to South America. 
It always went into Asia, and then... It also went into Asia, and thence to Europe, and to Africa. Equus looked much like the ponies of today, and had a flying maiden tail. And a hard hoof. From Equus, four main types of horses, which formed the basis of modern breeds, developed. In Asia, where the climate was very cold, where there was little forage and great barren wastes, as well as rocky mountains, two wild horses developed. One of these is called the Tarpan, and it is the only horse today that looks exactly as it did a million years ago. It is mouse-colored with a stripe down its back. The Tarpan has a strong, chunky body, short legs, a coarse, heavy head, and a shaggy coat. It is virtually untamable in the wild state, but has been crossed with other strains to provide mounts and draft horses. Another type is the dun-colored Przewalski's horse, named after the Russian discoverer, or the horse of the steeps. It is more easily tamed than the tarpan. In its natural habitat, it is very strong and swift, though small being only, though small being only about 48 inches at the shoulder. These little ponies, even when stabled, groomed, and fed, usually degenerate and are not as strong nor as swift as their wild brothers. In Europe, where the climate was mild and food was plentiful, there developed a horse called the Equus Robustus, or Great Horse. It looked very much like our draft horses of today. It was used by the knights, for with their heavy armor, a very big, strong horse was necessary. Although it was big, it was not clumsy, and Equus Robustus was trained to move very quickly and cleverly. In Africa, and in certain parts of Central Europe, a slender, swift-moving animal known as Equus Agilis roamed the plains. It is from this horse that we get the Arabian, Barb, and Andalusian strains, as well as the Greek horses. Equus Agilis is the ancestor of all the horses of today, known as the light breeds. We shall learn how man, through selective breeding, has developed the modern horse so that it can be used for specific purposes and, in doing so, has changed its appearance and temperament. Where did ponies come from? Ponies developed in the islands of Europe. They survived on sparse food supplies because they were small and needed little food. The Shetlands, the basic strain, came from the great horse, and they are built exactly like their big cousin. Some of the other breeds, such as the Welsh, some of the other breeds, such as the Welsh and Dartmoor ponies, lived in more open country and had Arabian blood introduced purposefully so that they are much slimmer. Many people think that all ponies are stubborn and not to be trusted. This is not true. Ponies are kind by nature, but easily spoiled. Properly trained and disciplined, they make fine pets and good mounts for the young children. The ponies are strong and intelligent. They soon learn that if the child who tries to ride or drive them is incompetent, they can do whatever they want. No child should try to manage either a pony or a horse until they have been taught horse language. He has to learn how to sit correctly and talk to his horse through the use of his hands, weight, and legs. What is the horse's most valuable characteristic? The use by man of the horse has affected the development of mankind and nations more than any other factor. The ancient Sanskrit word for swiftness is asva, and this is what the Mesopotamians called the horse. The Greek equus was taken from the word esir, also meaning quickness. So we know that from the beginning, man realized the horse's most valuable characteristic, speed.